Hello, this is Wahid Tanner from Electronic Thinking, and I wanted to do something different in this video. Um, I wanted to give you a preview of what the Digital Storage Oscilloscope Project is going to turn into. Uh, now, I know this looks complicated, uh, and it is starting to get complicated. Um, in fact, in order to build this circuit, uh, we've had to expand the breadboard with two more bus strips on the top and bottom. Uh, this is actually at about the uh, fifth month stage of this project. And so I'm making this video and I'm going to post it to an earlier month so that you can get an idea of what this project is going to turn into. Now when I started this project, I really was not expecting it to uh, turn out to encompass, to be such a wide encompassing project. Uh, and in fact, I've written down here some of the things that uh, this project is going to show you uh, and, and we're going to talk about in the course of this project and it's not even done yet so there might even be uh, you know if, if I thought about it longer I could probably come up with even more things that this project is going to uh, to actually get uh, you to experience hands-on uh, one of the things that uh, we're going to be talking about is input impedance. A lot of uh, simple oscilloscope projects that you might come across, open source uh, oscilloscope projects, uh, will have a low input impedance. And this um, particular project has a very high input impedance. And we'll get into why that's important and how it affects the project. We'll also be learning a lot about op amps. The circuit actually makes use of uh, three op amps right in the very beginning. And this one over here is uh, similar to an op amp. It's actually a programmable gain amplifier. Uh, but we've got three very basic op amps right in the very beginning. Uh, so we're going to be learning a lot about operational amplifiers. Uh, we're going to the first uh, the first op amp is what's called a voltage follower, and then we've got inverters. Uh, we've got a summing amplifier in here. And don't worry if you don't understand what all these things are yet. I just wanted, like I said, to give you a um, kind of a preview of what this project, what you're going to learn with this project. Uh, you're going to learn about uh, diode protection, how to use diodes to protect your input signals so that if you accidentally uh, apply too high of a voltage to your signal, you know, to your circuit, uh, that your, your circuit would be protected. You're going to learn about filter capacitors and how to make sure that you have good power supply signals coming into your circuits. You're going to learn all about digital versus analog. Uh, this circuit actually has the first part of the circuit is entirely analog and then we have the microcontrollers that are primarily uh, digital but then we've also got the analog to digital converter which is a mixture of both so you're really going to get a very first-hand very practical uh, experience to working with both analog and digital circuitry in this one project uh, let's see, you're going to learn about the programmable gain amplifiers. Uh, you're going to learn about output impedance. Uh, there's, there's many times in here where uh, I needed to drive one circuit from another and the output impedance from the previous stage was very important. You're going to learn about Zener diodes. Uh, they're, they're actually being used right um, here, these are a couple of Zener diodes that we're using uh, to make sure that our voltage levels, we're doing some voltage level conversion from 5 volts down to 3.3 volts, and you can learn how to use Zener diodes for that. Um, you're going to learn all about analog to digital conversion, and probably a little bit of digital analog conversion along the way. Uh, you're going to learn uh, all about sampling. Uh, sampling itself is a very critical uh, concept to this type of project and you'll learn why that's important and uh, quite a bit of theory behind that as well. Uh, you're going to learn all about uh, voltage regulators. We're using a 5 volt voltage regulator here in the middle of the circuit in order to get a separate 5 volt supply for the analog circuits and we keep the uh, the original 5 volt supply for the digital circuits. So you're going to learn about uh, how we're making use of uh, voltage regulators. Now ideally um, when the circuit is done, we might even include a 12-volt 
voltage regulators and negative 12 volt voltage regulators if they uh, end up being necessary. But right now we're just making use of the single 5 volt regulator. Uh, you're going to learn all about microcontrollers. A very important part of this project, there are actually two microcontrollers. There's the AT Mega 88 microcontroller that's here, and there's the AT Tiny microcontroller that's here. And you'll learn about why I chose those microcontrollers, and what their function is, how they're controlling the circuits, and what they're doing. I'm going to show you how to program them. Uh, you're you're going to be able to, when you're done, uh, incorporate microcontrollers into many different types of projects after you come through. Uh, this this particular project. Um, when you finish here, you're going to, after using two different microcontrollers in one project, um, you, you're going to be well on your way to being a microcontroller expert. Um, you're going to learn all about clocks and crystals. I'm actually using a 20 megahertz crystal here uh, to drive the circuit and I'll show you uh, in the videos later uh, some mistakes that I made around the, the crystals and um, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes as well but you're going to learn all about that. Uh, there's some elements of uh, testing that I put in here as well and you, it's very important that you, that you try to incorporate in your designs uh, certain aspects that will help you to be able to make sure that your circuit is operating correctly. So I'll show you uh, some software and some hardware tips on making sure that, that everything's working properly. You're going to learn all about timers and how to control at very precise intervals uh, exactly what's happening in your circuits. You're going to learn about interrupts. Uh, one thing that's very important when you're programming with microcontrollers is if your microcontroller is sitting there going in a loop uh, counting things, well, it while it's sitting there going in a loop counting, it can't be doing other things. So what you do is you uh, configure interrupts so that your microcontroller can go off and do various other tasks and when something important comes in, it will stop doing what it was doing, go handle that interrupt real quick, and then go back to doing what it was doing uh, previously. So you're going to learn all about interrupts. You're going to learn about firmware. We actually are going to have two different programs. One program on the AT Mega 88 and another program on the AT Tiny. Uh, so you're going to learn all about firmware and, and how, to, how to set up and how to structure your programs. The other thing you're going to learn about is the USB uh, protocol, the Universal Serial Bus Protocol to connect a circuit like this to your computer. I've, I've actually gone to a lot of trouble in this circuit uh, to show you how to uh, connect this to your computer through a USB connection. Uh, so this is not going to use a serial or parallel connection to connect to your computer. Uh, very important, especially because a lot of computers nowadays are not including uh, serial or parallel connections anymore. So I could probably keep talking on and on. I mean, this, this project is turning into such a, uh, a gold mine of real practical experience that I thought I would make this video from a later month and include it in an earlier month just so you can see uh, what, is, what this project is going to do for you in terms of really getting first-hand experience and trying some of these things.